Translation is really moving data from a model system into a target system. And really what we have to think about in, in translation is what is the model system? The model system may be a human cell culture, an animal model. What's the target system? Is it human clinical trials or is it human clinical practice? What's the data that we're translating? What endpoints are we transplanting? translating? Are we using biomarkers that translate? And what predictions are we going to make in moving from the model system to the target system? Are we looking to predict safety or efficacy? One of the things I'd like to point out is a historic study really that came out in 2004 and still serves as, a, I think, an instructive model. In that review, the reasons for attrition in several areas of drug development were looked at over a 10-year period from 1991 to 2000. And what you can see is that in comparing the attrition uh, for each criterion in different sections, what you can see is that in the case of clinical safety and toxicology, over that 10-year period, the contribution of those areas to attrition got worse. Namely, these areas were areas where the practice, in essence, got worse, very simply. On the other hand, here's an interesting observation. In the case of pharmacokinetics and bioavailability, there was a dramatic improvement. In other words, the number of projects and drugs that failed due to this feature, due to this attribute, uh, was greatly reduced in that 10-year period. And the reality is that was reflecting the impact of new uh, ADME assays that were introduced in that period. So it shows that really there are opportunities that can be taken to improve the whole process of drug development. Parts of the problem, I would say, in terms of translation are there differences in study design and difference in what's measured in terms of model systems and the target system, the ID, that is the clinic. In the preclinical arena, uh, you often are dosing regularly over a period of time. You weigh and observe animals regularly, and I'm uh, clearly referring in a great deal to safety studies. You sacrifice the animal after a period of time, collect blood and tissues, and look at the tissues microscopically. But in the clinic, while in a clinical trial, patients may be dosed regularly over a period of time, and in the case of phase one trials, you're looking at volunteers or patients on a regular basis. You collect blood and urine, have measurements such as EKG, but there is not this this concept of sacrificing the experimental system and examining the tissues microscopically. So there's differences in how, uh, how the studies are conducted. So there's room for improvement in terms of the study designs, making them more translational, and in terms of the endpoints. One really is looking for translational biomarkers that will give you the same information in a model system, and that can even be a test system such as an in vitro system. And there's also room for improvement in understanding of the difference in biology and targets. With that, I think I'll simply turn this over to our first speaker and not take any more of his time. Our first speaker is Laszlo Urban, who is an MD, PhD, and executive director and global head of the preclinical Secondary Pharmacology Division at the Novartis Institutes for Biomedical Research. He'll be talking about risk assessment based on secondary pharmacology. Thank you very much, Phil, and welcome to this uh, first presentation within this series. I'm going to focus on target-based predictions, uh, which are coming from secondary pharmacology and particularly focus on the link between off-target effects and adverse drug reactions, which is obviously the primary requisition requirement uh, for doing these early studies. So 
First of all, what's the role of secondary pharmacology we have to outline? It fits nicely in between the primary pharmacodynamic studies and safety pharmacology studies. And the primary pharmacodynamic includes here both in vitro and in vivo studies, which are related to the primary target for a particular chosen disease. 